point, they can be um, subject to diffusion, to some sort of deformation. But no, we, we found these things were stable. It was, uh, that first study, both these studies were pretty pleased, but the first study especially, because um, now we have that analytic underpinning, especially incorporating temperature. We really like, I mean, everybody would say that about the research, but we really did like our results. Okay, our second speaker today is Alejandra Aceves. Uh, sorry, SMU, what does SMU stand for? Uh, you pick it, uh, Southern <laughs> Methodist University. Okay, in yes. And uh, he will talk about the fractional NLSC and its applications to nonlinear optics. Thank you, and uh, thank again to uh, the organizers to bringing uh, you know, us together, seeing all friends. It's always good. So uh, this goes into a little bit of the speculative, but uh, let's see if um, uh, we can motivate on both fronts the applications and the modelers on this concept of fractionality. So I will try to introduce, uh, I will introduce the concept of fractional Laplacian, how then it applies in the realm of photonics. The, there is work already ongoing and it's theoretical at this point. I will try to do the, put the motivation what may be interesting uh, to present it in the context of photonics and uh, just to pass the test to say applications, I will put a real application in a different context. It's a brief discussion of what is called quartic solitons. So uh, as a framework uh, you know, for a conversation, I always like to start with a conversation that we can be in a sense of comfort uh, of what we are talking about. Um, we know well you know, con what is um, continuous fields like uh, waves in the ocean or light filaments described by a field and uh, you know, uh, modeled by a partial differential equations. In our laboratory, sometimes is uh, numerical simulation. So we discretize and we get discrete systems. The good news is also discrete systems are intrinsically evident in the, in, in particular in photonics. I mean, we know couple oscillators uh, that they are uh, with nearest neighbor interactions. So these we could view it as nearest neighbor interactions, but we can also view it as a center's difference scheme for a second derivative. There is, in the realm of oscillators, uh, the concept of different strengths of coupling from nearest neighbors, the common thing that we see, to more global uh, coupling, and in the extreme, where all oscillators couple to each other with equal strength. And the, and the uh, main topic here is uh, driven, was driven by the Kuramoto model. And the order parameter here is how nearly identical oscillators can synchronize and work in, in synchrony. It is interesting that I, you know, there is a model, I won't talk about it here, it's a, a little bit outside this topic, but if we translate into photonics and we want to combine a bunch of amplifiers with equal intensity, there is sensitivity in the phase and we want to lock them in phase, so the order parameter which is synchrony here is, would be coherence and we can have a similar model for trying to enhance coherent high intense uh, beams in, in, in amplifiers. So um, the stories we know well, and it's interesting to remind ourselves that the, the English version of the uh, integrable Saharov Shabbat paper is 50 years old. And, uh, and so in the context of optics, we, in, the in the PDE systems, we know well the one dimensional, not only a Schrodinger equation, being integrable, and we know quite well the two dimensional uh, uh, Schrodinger equation, even though there are no you know, the, the notion of collapse and, uh, and, uh, and critical power and whatnot, and the competition of dispersion and uh, diffraction and nonlinearity. In optics, if we change x by t, then it is dispersion and nonlinearity that compete. So um, what it is a discrete system in optics? Well, the, the best known is a couple waveguide arrays. So, so once again, I want to introduce you know, the, 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 this is the, a couple wave guide. Uh, the, there is near neighbor interactions. There is a well known behavior in the, uh, in the low power system. But as power increases, you get uh, localized, discrete localized structures. So our tools again is going between discrete and continuum approximations. 
And the benefit here is if we were to make a continuum approximation, we know everything and we can translate one to the other. But we have to be careful, this is with a warning. It's not always true that this approximation is good. In particular, there are, in the, you know, the, 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 the Galilean boost that is known here disappears in the discrete system. The highly localized states is a different physics. So we always do this with a little bit of a caveat. Um, there is also in optics the benefit of both mixing discrete and continuum in your systems. And, and a good example, and using the time scales of Stefano, in the last century, uh, we did uh, study what would be coupling uh, waveguides in, and adding temporal dispersion. So you have a continuum component and you have a discrete component. At that time, the notion of uh, of uh, doing this, I would talk to uh, Silverberg, the guy who did the waveguides, and says, well, it's very difficult to enhance this in the waveguides. Later on, you know, the, 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 the photonics people were able to do multi-core so fibers, you know, the cores that build the fibers, you put them nearby, and therefore you can uh, generate this uh, model, you know, a system that is well defined by this model, and we again, if we were to do a continuum approximation of the nearest neighbor coupling, then you get, with the right sign of the beta 2, the well-known collapse phenomena. But again, the collapse phenomena, uh, you know, this approximation breaks down at some point, but breaks down in a good way. You can create, as you localize discreetly in space into a few cores, you're also compressing in time, and you create something that, sadly, the name is not a nice name, but like bullets. And, 10 years later, the, or 15 years later, this was shown experimentally, and as, for example, Stefano would uh, experiments show, they are not clean experiments, but, uh, but sometimes it takes time to realize an interesting theoretical concept, but it does happen. So in optics, again, the uh, basic tools is, uh, in the linear regime is dispersion diffraction, and the advance of technology is the idea of engineering dispersion. So the classical second order dispersion is the rearrangement of, of uh, frequencies as they propagate in a, in a medium with an index of refraction. And the counter of the nonlinearity is kind of uh, flipping uh, the, 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 through the nonlinear uh, correction in the index, and this balance creates the, the solid ones. But nowadays, I mean, this is the generic uh, first relevant term in the dispersion profile, second order, a quadratic profile in frequency, and now uh, people can engineer dispersion and create favorite profiles. So here is a cavity, and uh, this is an important thing to point out. Here's an experiment in a cavity in which they can flatten the dispersion, make it fourth order uh, at the leading term end, and for this, uh, this would be the um, model equation, the fourth order derivative as the leading order, and for which there are pulses. This is not integrable, but there are pulses. And again, this is the one that has been experimentally realized. And, and the uh, idea or why it might be interesting is because of uh, energy scaling. So you, as you shorten the pulse in the classical NLS, this is the, the balance of, uh, of the uh, power versus width of the pulse. And with a quartic, the shorter the pulse, the more power you can carry in. So that's kind of the, a practical benefit, uh, carry a lot of power in short pulses. And uh, part of my duty here is to give full credit to the people who actually did the work on the theoretical front. This is a postdoc, Ross Parker, and my current PhD student, Sabrina. And so here is just a brief presentation. The experiments, what is important to see in, 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 in these uh, pictures is that the face is flat. So it's not a cheer pulse, it's a, it's a well-established pulse with an interesting feature of the tails have a, a different profile, and this is in, in log scale, uh, how the pulse uh, behaves. And moving on to, uh, you know, this is pulse propagation, uh, but uh, you have to create the pulses, and, and the building block is a laser or a cavity where you uh, you have some detuning, you have some uh, uh, gain, if we ignore other effects. This is the variation of what is known as the Lugiato Lefebvre equation, and, and Sabrina has been able to uh, numerically study and generate pulses and do some 
uh, studies of the stability of multipoles. But uh, I'm going now to the uh, topic uh, that I want to pay more attention to. It's an interesting concept, and it's one that is harder to, to, to convince the, uh, the photonics community. Can we engineer diffraction? And diffraction, again, you know, in, it's in case space. Uh, you know, the, uh, in the diffraction is the spreading of the beam, the different directions of the, of the, um, of the wave vectors. Nonlinearity produces a lens that compensates this, and even though in two dimensions the balance is tenuous, in principle, this is how a, a, you can self-sustain a spatial solid. And the signature of the Laplacian in k space is having k, uh, k square. And uh, the question is, can you engineer diffraction and make it fractional? Can, can the power be something between uh, 0 and 2? And what does, why is that interesting? Where does this appear? And, and, and that's the next thing. So a little bit of a, a, a departure. This concept of uh, associating fractionality in the Laplacian and probability is well known, it's, uh, and it is the difference between two processes in random, uh, two random processes. The classical um, random walk, which is, uh, uh, you know, in small time steps, you move just to the right, to the left, small distances, whereas Levy flight and Levy was probabilist, it, 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 there is a finite probability of long flights. And for example, uh, uh, an up-to-date important uh, uh, ex ex uh, example of Levy flights is a pandemic. A pandemic, you can have a finite probability of, uh, of, of making someone sick by a true flight, in this case, in an airline flight. And, and, and in fact, on a side note, that's how I got sick on a trip to Greece. I went back to Dallas. And then I got my wife sick. So my wife is not very happy about these uh, levy fight flight processes. So, in, so, so these are finite probability uh, things. And if you do realizations, uh, it's very evident uh, the, the difference between a classical random walk that if you live in the diffusion uh, process world, where it's, this is a more mature concept, it clearly shows diffusion, whereas levy flights have a very different um, trajectory. Now. Um, uh, just a, a simple exercise of the connection of random works with, with uh, diffusion uh, is that if you do this discrete version in, in a small interval of time, you have a probability to move to the left at amount delta x, or to the right, or stay. If you manipulate this uh, quantity and you go to a uh, small delta x and small delta t, and the key thing here is you, you, may, you have to have this Thing to be finite as you go to zero, you get the diffusion process, so the second derivative. So uh, roughly speaking, the concept of fractionality both in space and time is with, to replace the finite uh, realization of this limit where you replace two by a parameter and delta t you put it to another parameter. So you may have fractionality in time, fractionality in, in x, but that's just a, a loose conversation. It's not very specific. Now, I'm going to imagine a, uh, the, the probability of long flights. So you can go far away to the right or to the left with some probability that has to properly decay. And so the, the, the actual evolution in time has this uh, generalization as opposed to the nearest neighbor walk. And this is some, uh, basically the conservation of probability. And this is, again, very rough. And I'm not going to do the pre precise analysis, but you can write instead of a differential equation, an integral version, but as obviously the subtlety here is the PN pro property has to be such that uh, 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 there is a convergence here as delta t delta x goes to zero. But basically, uh, a way to write this equation is through this kernel operator and the, par and the level of fractionality is this index alpha. So. Um, in fact, if you go to just linear and ray optics, uh, here is a, a Levy flight of light. Here's a paper in 2008. And the connection with this process of probability of long distances is referred to, imagine a very heterogeneous medium. So again, the concept here is heterogeneity in your medium, uh, where you have different, you know, you have two, two index of refraction, the dark and the bright. These are, you know, circles or spheres in 3D. And the diameter of these have a, 
a, a, a long tail distribution, and alpha here once again is the, uh, uh, the degree of fractionality. And if you do just ray theory by basic Snell's laws, uh, you create this sort of Levy flight. So he, you know, Barthelemy calls this the invariant Levy glass. You know, if uh, this evening at, in dinner, at dinner after a few beers and wine, I could even tell you a, a crazy idea I had that you can use models like this, a photonic based model to study pandemics. Because again, the connection of Levy flights, if we think of this as people and then uh, index of refraction as some sort of rules of trapping or not trapping. But in any event, there is this first optics ray based uh, concept of the Levy flight showing heterogeneity. The fractional Laplacian is really a very uh, mature concept in, in other fields, quasi geostrophic, reaction diffusion, porous medium, ultrasound, and it all the common thing is in a diffusive or transport process, the heterogeneity of the, of the medium. It is interesting, you know, a departure I want to propose is uh, that this is fractional in all directions. So if this is in two dimensions, it's equally fractional in both dimensions. And then I want to highlight uh, the, um, that, the, in fact, as it has happened in optics in connection with quantum mechanics, there was a proposal of fractionality in quantum mechanics. So if you build the, the, the quantum mechanics, uh, the Schrodinger equation based on path integrals, well, the underlying property of path integrals is what's the classical Brownian motion or nearest neighbor possibilities and probability of the paths. So if you allow a levy flight probability, long tail probability, then you would arrive to the, what is called the space fractional quantum mechanics. And this was proposed by Laskin. And of course, in the quantum mechanical realm, there hasn't been a realization of this. But optics and photonics, we know those of us who have worked on this in uh, paraxial approximations, the Schrodinger equation has the, you know, is the same equation in different, uh, for different uh, applications of the, the quantum probability now is the envelope of a field. So Longhi, in an optics letter paper, uh, proposed a cavity in which you have basically two elements, uh, you know, masks and lenses. And the light ba bounces back and forth, and um, you get a map. And you, you know, this map is, you know, the, 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 the time step is the time of travel, the travel time in the cavity. You do a mean field approximation and you get into a PD. So I'm not going to go into the details, but the lens by a particular functional form can, in, can produce uh, a fractional diffraction. And this is just an averaging. I mean, uh, the, light, you know, the, the rays spread and then you have a lens that they, they, they put them back together. And if you do this in average, you can in principle create a, a, a fractional diffraction. And the idea here, the, you know, what Longhi says is in traditional laser cavities, we build uh, Gaussian-like object beams, but you can create very interesting uh, profiles out of a laser if you then put gain and loss. Uh, and that was his idea. Um, needless to say, and I'm going to not go very uh, uh, much into the details of, of this uh, because I just want to uh, finish by opening the suggestion of the, you know, the, there is room for uh, looking at this problem. Uh, when you add nonlinearity, there are different versions. There is a lot of literature on theoretical and numerical studies of this problem. You can put such a role nonlinearity, parity time symmetry, modulations, and so on. So, so there is a work in the literature. It's predominant, you know, in some sense, mostly theoretical. And, uh, and just for a point of reference that the people are working on this, but I can't say they are close or far from a particular uh, realization. The one that I wanted to highlight, uh, and we are working on it, uh, it's uh, back to the linear system and the question of WKB for highly oscillatory uh, problems. So just a one dimensional linear uh, Schrodinger equation, but with fractionality. And I apologize. The, the, the parameter changes uh, with the literature. This was done with a former postdoc at Deusto in, in Bilbao, and he, we, I need to bring up someone I'll, I'll refer to, to to build up on this uh, problem. It's an interesting problem. It's the semi-classical. The equation is what are 
Are there caustics? How do they behave? Is there an iconal equation, a transport equation? Here are numerical simulations of how the, 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 you know, the uh, a highly oscillatory in initial condition behaves at different levels of, of uh, fractionality. Notice uh, the, there is no transport, or I mean it stays locked for very small s, whereas in other cases there is this uh, 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 behavior. Here is the behavior of the velocity, how it's evolving in, uh, in, in terms of the, uh, uh, of the um, degree, of the, the level of uh, fractionality. So obviously trying to build asymptotics here, the trick question is very simple. You know, you, you put uh, the classical profile of amplitude and phase as your answer in this case. I mean, you, you rescale to make it a semi-classical, but then when you do product, you, you have to do the derivative of a product, your amplitude and the phase. And what is the derivative of a product when you have fractionality? That's the tricky part and, and the careful buildup of asymptotics. So we still are not clear how to do them, the model, but uh, a postdoc of mine, Brian, is working on it. So I want to uh, uh, basically uh, finish in, in, a, in a direction that goes back to spatial temporal uh, that happens in, in optics. And here it is. Uh, in particular, also I'll present a scenario where this may be realized. And so it goes back to, again, uh, the, um, if I have nonlinearity and I have uh, in a discrete system, so now I'm going to go discrete. Uh, the coupling, the coupling varies in distance. M minus N is the separation between oscillator or waveguide, and it has a fractional, uh, an algebraic decay, the strength of the coupling. Then if you were to do the continuum limit, you could get this, uh, this um, uh, fractional Laplace. And there is an interesting uh, set of analysis, and there is one paper on the validity of the continuum approximation. As I said at the beginning, you can go back and forth when you have a discrete system, whether you discretize a PDE or you have a discrete system and you want to look at the continuum approximation. When it's fractional, there is, uh, in one dimension, uh, for, uh, there is a result here about the different validities. Where do you go in, in terms of the degree of uh, algebraic decay or the degree of fractionality? And in some cases, you can even recover, even though it's non-local here, there are uh, w regimes in which you can recover the, the, the classical NLS as opposed to fractional NLS here. So, you can go different regimes. So this is a competition, a third competition. We said the competition about diffraction or discrete diffraction and nonlinearity. Here is the competition about long range, the strength of the long range interaction and nonlinearity. Where do you, do you go in terms of the continuum limit? Uh, and if I do add the temporal behavior here, so I add this term, and if I look at the continuum limit, I go to something that is interesting I've never seen in literature from the theoretical point of view. Why, you know, either everything is Laplacian or everything is fractional Laplacian. But in reality, you could think that in different directions, the level of heterogeneity, if you think about diffusion processes, may be different. Here in the optics regime, this is engineering diffraction or the continuum limit of the discrete system, and this is classical dispersion. So what in practice it says in the two transverse variables, and remember in optics this transverse and this is time-like, you may have different degrees of, 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 of uh, fractionality. And here's an exercise that as alpha approaches, um, uh, uh, here, I'm sorry, if alpha is equal to zero, recognize if alpha is equal to zero is the classical 1D NLS. If alpha is equal to four, I apologize, this should be four or this should be alpha then you get the 2D NLS. And you can scan in terms of the alpha value and see whether asymmetric initial conditions, if at high powers you can kind of uh, you know, erase the long range property and go to the classical collapse-like radially symmetric behavior. So these are just uh, numerical simulations to test the behavior of this big fractional Schrodinger equation. So here it is where you know, I presented a similar talk with a different emphasis to the photonics community a few weeks ago. And I said, well, I mean, now there is a lot of uh, good work on ring resonators. And ring resonators, they're a little solitons traveling, so 
for every m it's your nls this term and the nonlinearity and this term what about coupling them but not in a nearest neighbor but in a long range interaction that could be the best possible setting at this time in my opinion to get this so this is um, something to that the closest I could think of an interesting realization of these systems. Um, so again, here it would be this spatial temporal behavior in the continuum limit. And a former student of mine did some numerical uh, studies of this problem. If you go into the more mathematical realm when you begin to think about uh, multi-dimensions and nonlinearity, there is, in fact, very nice functional analysis-based work on, on concepts that we are we hear and we know about in, in the 2D NLS, orbital stability, uh, possibilities of blow up. I don't have the time to go into the details, but there is work on that. And the, the, the point of this transparency is to show that my, former, my current postdoc who's looking for a job, a very good harmonic analyst, I gave him this problem to look at possible applications and he went into the functional analysis work and, and the rigorous results, fine with me. He, I'm learning more from him than, than he's learning from me. But he's tried to extend rigorous results and existence of, uh, of, of solutions in particular spaces when you have mixed derivatives. So this is a, the first uh, rigorous study of mixed fractionality. Uh, uh, I want to highlight and the, you know, some of the work, and this has been updated into a Frontiers paper, to again, finally, you know, once again recognize the young people that have actually done the work, Umberto, uh, uh, the, the uh, Copeland, who is a former student who's doing well now, he's in the finance world, Brian, postdoc who's looking for a job, Ross, postdoc looking for a job, and, and Sabrina, a grad student. And um, with this, uh, again, the idea of my presentation is to see if there would be I think there is an interest in this new direction. There may be a possible interest on in these dispersive uh, uh, concepts in the semi-classical. I presented one example. By the way, that example of the fractional Schrodinger apparently is important in control theory. And perhaps we can convince the people of, uh, of build the devices that they could be create a particular new direction on these photonic devices. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alejandro. Time for questions. Wonderful uh, overview. Thank you so much. I learned a great deal. Uh, quick question. Are you running any simulations of your equations? And if so, which form of the fraction derivative are you using uh, as a matter of practice in your simulations? Yeah, very, very good question, because that's precisely the heart of this. So because of the, uh, you know, in in particular, the, 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 um, I cannot tell you, I don't know, you know, the, for the linear case, the semi-classical, it was FFT type of approach, and that's in itself tricky. In the non-linear, uh, to be honest, uh, what we have done really, the underlying is do this system. I mean, this, or if we put uh, time derivatives, so do Fourier on this, and then just the, 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 the long-range interactions of the fractional Laplacian. So, I see. So, so we want to mimic what would be a true discrete long-range interaction. And, and so the, it's a good question in the sense if in one way it gears towards a particular concept of, of long-range interactions of couple oscillators. In another way, in another direction, it may be an inefficient way of, of numerically studying the continuum problem and analyzing properties of the PD in itself. So, there is that dichotomy that is not clear at this time. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's traditional FFT in time for the spatial temple and, and this discretization. And what are your limits on N and M in those simulations in this equation you must take? Is N and M the whole grid or do you truncate? Uh, no, we truncate, of course, yeah. We How many it. sites? Yeah. Do you, you truncate you know, five sites uh, or 100 sites or where do you, where do you oh, truncate? Oh, we, you know, for numerical simulations we can do, you know, 1,000 sites or 10, 24 or whatever the numbers are. So n and the n, the, the, the limit and the number in this sum could be large. I mean, it, that's not a, I understand. A, a, Thank a, a, a burden in terms of the computation. But the idea, again, is, uh, is that a good uh, discretization of the fractional NLS as a continuum PD? Perhaps not. Who knows? 
It is a, a relevant numerical simulation of what would be a concept of uh, off couple oscillators with long range. Right. Absolutely. Right. So interesting question. Sorry. Interesting question is uh, how far? How many sites do you need in order to get a certain degree of accuracy? Ah. As to say, is five sites enough to get one percent accuracy? Do you need ten sites? Do you need ten twenty-four sites? And that says the effective range is a practical matter for mm -hmm. physical applications. Yeah. I mean, I, I cannot give you the answer. Uh, in detail, uh, but but certainly that was what, uh, in particular, what Austin did. Uh, you know, we have to trade. You know, so the idea of, and I'm very uh, bad at simulation. I, I'm, I'm a rudimentary, but all, we did the basic things. We extended the number of sites, and we saw how much the, the solution, the long range, after in time. And then, you know, Austin, my student, did some estimates on the error they are in the paper and I don't remember them. <laughs> so sorry. Oh well, right, 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 right. So so you know again uh, the, the motivation also on the on the simulations is based on trying to do the physics. So a long range distribution you need a long number of tails. So if you put energy at the beginning in the initial condition and a, a lot of these oscillators, you need a huge number of of sites and you want to study numerically this competition about long range coupling, nonlinearity, and what the final state is. And, but in, and in the spatial temporal, the temporal part is just F, it's FFT, you know, we, we go in the uh, Fourier space. Okay. Sorry, the answer was incomplete <laughs> on, the, on the errors of the simulation. Uh, <coughs> uh, in uh, normal nonlinear Schrodinger equation, so you have some critical nonlinearity which separates collapse and stable solitons, and uh, at this parameter of nonlinearity, you have some special symmetry, right? And because of this special symmetry, uh, following sort of Noether theorem, you have extra conserved quantity which gives you virial theorem or loss of Talanov. So if you have such critical parameter in terms of fractional parameter, S, whatever. So do, did you study this symmetry? It should be some extra symmetry in this so, case. So, so uh, we, we are searching at that, exactly. Uh, numerically at this point, we don't have any result. There is no virial here, you know, the, the trying to do. And again, the, the challenge of trying to build a virial theorem is you go to you have to write a Hamiltonian, and the Hamiltonian has a fractional gradient square, have the power. And so the, all of these become subtle, uh, and, and there is no formal virial theorem. We should assume it should be well scaled and we can check. Uh, we should. Be it should, and, and, and we when. Can follow Noether theorem and derive this. Uh, Perhaps. So I'll talk to you, but uh, clearly the observations suggest that, uh, naively speaking, if you notice, at the, if collapse wins, which there is a scenario of possible collapse, then, then you are in a regime in which the non-local coupling is irrelevant, so you are in a regime dynamically close to NLS. So, so this is a transient, but this is suggestive, I'm not saying this is a proof, that the way you can reach collapse is by uh, inhibiting global coupling. Yeah, yeah. Just, just checking. Yeah. Checking. But I think here for output of one cup, it will be super critical collapse, which I agree with. We will not keep it in paper. Let's keep it in the so But it should be some separation. Yeah, here is, here is uh, the theorem about power and, uh, and criticality and blow up. So here is the result, not ours, uh, but there is a, uh, a result that goes along these lines of scaling. Not with, by Burial theorem, but. Yes, let's truncate the clock coupling and uh, yeah, well, let me ask go local. Very short question. So in this uh, previous reference, I think 2018, which you showed, basically we study free fractional sharing the equation. Do we have some analog of uh, Gaussian beams or coherent states? Here? Or which yeah, one? yeah. Uh, maybe it was a little before, before resonators. Because it could be kind of building blocks it was, no, it was uh, ah. Guy Bucchetti, Brunetti, something 2018. Ah. Here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Bicari. Yeah, yeah. 
previous slide. So is there any analog of, oh, it, we just saw it. Ah, this one? No. Ah, the other way. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because so this okay, is, is a. Is there any analog of Gaussian beams, a coherent states, basically Gaussian solutions? Or well, I mean, going through? yes, I, I, I mean, there is room. Here's that point. I mean, that we, we haven't explored that. He came from a c control theory perspective where fractional, or the fractional application is important. So we only try the, these, the first, uh, you know, problems, you know, in the semi-classical at high frequency, what happens. But I don't know. I mean, there, I'm sure there is ways to do the you Gauss. Can, at yeah. least it will be interesting to look. Yeah, no, I agree. Start. I agree. I'm sorry, but I think we need to move the rest of the discussion to the coffee break because thank you. it's already time for the coffee break. We will resume at 10.30. Let's thank Alejandro.